we got our audio issues sorted out. I am sure there is nothing that is going to go wrong from here. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, day late and half an hour short, I am the Mighty Pong, and you are currently watching the Sin Shop Podcast. Our special guest tonight is the Mighty Sarah, Pet- Sarah Petkus, and uh, we are going to be talking to her. Uh, uh, Jim would like to say hi to Noodle Feet right off the bat. Aww. Right? Aww. Noodle Feet. Noodle Feet says hi. That's He's- awesome. That Aww. is super cool. All right, big big uh, Noodle Feet fans in the house. That's that's what kept them here, you know, through our our <laughs> audio uh, our audio mess uh, is the 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 promise of Noodle Foot. All right, so. I uh, do want to make a quick announcement about the shop. Uh, this is, of course, the Sin Shop podcast. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about uh, the different rules that we make for ourselves. But first, an announcement on the shop. We are, of course, located at 1075 American Pacific Drive, Sweet C in fabulous Henderson, Nevada. But unless you're a member, you're going to have to wait a little bit to come check out the shop. Sin Shop is currently closed to the public for now. But we'd like to remind you that while we are closed to the public, if you're in a shared space elsewhere, to make sure that you wear a mask and clean clean tools, surfaces, and materials before and after you use them. Stay home, don't touch your face, and for Pete's sake, wash your damn hands. Now, uh, to stay updated on the shop's open status, check out sinshop.org forward slash COVID status to find the latest information and to make sure that you're notified of our future events, including virtual ones just like this one. You can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. And with that, let me finally... Finally, at long last, introduce our guest. Good grief. So, yes, returning champion, robot creator, fast and messy, messy engineer, uh, and, and uh, at one time myth maybe, Sarah Petkus. Welcome back. And again, thank you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. <laughs> you are so welcome. All right, let's get into it. Here we go. So what is the point of this whole silly episode? Now, once upon a time, uh, I made a whole bunch of rules for myself. And basically, the idea was that in certain situations, they would uh, well, they would govern how things would operate when I was, you know, in a in a. Uh, uh, in a, an unfamiliar situation or one that was familiar, but emotions could possibly overrun things. And a lot of these managed to keep me out of trouble, uh, but they gave a lot of structure to a, a somewhat messy life. And so I kind of wanted to share them with others. And I thought that, that Sarah would be a great person uh, to bounce a lot of these off of, uh, you know, just, you know, kind of, kind of riff on it. You know, I guess you could say, all right. So, the very first one, and this was actually the one that had the biggest impact on me, was we were at uh, Six Flags over Mid-America, outside of St. Louis. I was very, very young, and I wanted to ride this ride. I can't. It's, it's some kind of barrel ride where it spins so fast it pins you up against the wall. And um, I asked my mom, well, no, it wasn't that one. It was the Screaming Eagle. It doesn't matter. I asked my mom, you know, do you think that that ride would be okay for me to ride? In other words, like, will I get sick if I get on that ride? She said, well, here's what you do. You watch the people getting off of that ride before you get on the ride. And that is how you're going to look. And she said, decide accordingly. So in other words, if people are staggering off of that ride and they run over to the trash can and dump out their churros, then, you know, then that's, <laughs> then that's probably a ride to go ahead and bypass. And now you might see how that could be extrapolated into a life of, of musical whatnot. Wait, I'm so, wait, I mean, so in other words, like you, you see how, do you, do you see how that could be applied to daily life? Yes. Um, so advice being, are, are you yielding to me to comment? Or are you still sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to okay. do. Yeah, no, you, you, okay. you riff. Go for it. I, w- I wasn't sure if it, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I want to say, yeah, definitely in life. Um, I try to look at uh, how other people who are walking a similar path as me or, I don't know, a path that I would like to walk, how they're faring and how their, I guess, energy is. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to kind of get a feel for how I think uh, I would fare in similar circumstances. Although, uh, so yeah, no, no, I definitely, I get that. 
as like a, a life, a general life advice, just mm-hmm. to kind of pay attention to uh, other, like, I guess your elders, I guess, are your mentors and see uh, what advice uh, you can kind of take from their experiences and kind of like, I don't know, preen and take for yourself to like make better choices. So yes. That, yeah. <laughs> that's that. That's so when, what I, how do I put this? You know, I, I use that a lot whenever someone was going to go out, you know, like, Hey, we're going to go out and party, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be like, Oh no, I'll, I'll pass this time. And I'd see, you know, when they come home, what do they look like after going out and partying? No, no, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, some, although sometimes it was like, Oh, well, actually that does look like a lot of fun. But, uh, but you know, it, it depends, you know, like if you want to ride the ride, watch the people getting off that ride before you get on it. I, no, definitely. Like I, uh, I want to say I, I averted a lot of probably negative life experiences when I was younger by like experiencing them vicariously through my closer friends. Cause, um, I didn't similarly, like I didn't, I didn't go out and do the frat party beer pong house thing yeah. when I was growing up. And I always, uh, suffered from what we now have a term for. We call it FOMO mm-hmm. now, right? The fear of missing out. And um, I always used to, you know, feel like crap all the time because uh, when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't go out and do a lot of the fun things that young people usually go out and do or wait all throughout high school to finally be able to go and, you know, be wild and free and careless. But um, a lot of my closer friends would invariably show up at my doorstep like in the middle of the night because something terrible had happened. And it was the sort of thing that I realized it wasn't worth uh, like taking that sort of risk. And that kind of carried on into my adulthood in kind of more professional circumstances. Um, So it's, I guess like another way of interpreting that is to kind of uh, learn from the mistakes that other people make so that you don't have to make those mistakes yourself. Yeah. Oh, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, in uh, kind of going off of that, it would be the next one. Um, everything has a cost, including nothing. Yes. So, I... yeah, meaning that you're going to spend time, effort, money or reputation to do whatever, even if it's not deciding anything at all. So in order to, you know, if you are faced with a decision that's tough, Take it, keep in mind that inaction has a cost in addition to uh, uh, to the cost of action. I can quote Rush. If you oh. choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Are you a Rush fan or is it just me being a dork? Or am I not no, supposed to you, sing? <laughs> you, no, you can do all those things. It's just Rush. Oh, what? You don't like Rush? Uh, what? What? In the post game. In the post game, I will tell you why I don't like Rush. I don't like Rush. I will I will admit that I don't like Rush, and I will tell you why in the post game. Okay, because they'll totally have a beer and tell you why you're wrong. Oh no! <laughs> I could I could. No, be- I've, you know what? No, I'll hear the argument. You have you. I will come at this with a completely open mind, and and I will have a beer with you, and we you can tell me that I'm wrong. I don't know if you're I believe wrong. you, but we'll you're try. Not wrong, you're not wrong. I'm just, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Maybe I am. No, no, Maybe no. I am. But you have a ch- you have a chance. You have a chance to make a Rush fan here. Don't don't throw it away. Uh, Jim I, uh, <laughs> says, "What rules do we make now? Do we break them at times? What rules do we make now? Well, I mean, this is a living document to me. Like it, it's not even it, it's not even a document until I wrote it down. Uh, there's actually a couple on here that I actually took off of here. What? Are, oh, oh, look at you. You made notes." Look at who made notes. You can put them in the show it. notes. I did. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. I it's fine. Do. You didn't have to. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. My next one is okay. Okay, all right. Well, Krobasar, then you stick around for the post game too. You guys can all gang up on me, and I will tell you why I don't like it. You can tell me why you do like it. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Okay, number three. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, but more importantly, don't feed the mouth that bites you. So in other words, good advice. 
if something is if if there's something or someone that is that is messing with you then what are you doing like why would you why would you continue to give support it with money or time or attention you know what i mean if something or someone is is injuring you then just put it over there walk away yes be wise where you spend your energy very true all right well we're going through these way too fast. Uh, so, well, okay. I could totally talk about them more. Like the last one, the yeah. indecision is, I, I can comment on that. Uh, I think indecision has the biggest cost and it's something that I probably personally struggle with the most. Really? Um, yes. Um, I want to say on like, on like a static level, like with normal life decisions, like I just act and do stuff pretty, uh, I don't know. I just, that's, that's not the problem. I think the, the bigger decisions, the ones that feel like they weigh heavier on your life are the ones that I tend to get held up on. And then I wait really long and I realize all the while that that time that I'm spending making the decision is actually, um, it's taking a toll on me too. Um, and I know it, but it doesn't help me make the decision any quicker. So that's something that I personally work with, but it's, it's definitely good to keep that in mind, um, or remember it. So I would, I would totally, I comply with that second commandment, sir. Hmm. And the one that you just said was, um, what was it again? In short, the, uh, don't, don't bite the hand that feeds you, but more importantly, don't feed the mouth that bites you. Yes, I would. Yeah. Don't, I would translate that personally into the, the for me paying attention to where you spend your energy yeah um and the energy that you put out and where yeah where that goes for sure mm-hmm. which is definitely good advice yeah. yeah uh jim asks has we have we made rules in the past that do not apply or have changed today um for the longest time, I had one that was know when to say when, but know when to say whoa. So in other words, you know, yeah, exactly. Know when to say when is in like, no, I've had enough. But then, oh, wait, uh, also there was uh, everything in moderation, including moderation itself. That's actually a Benjamin Franklin quote. Um, and I really liked that because it was like, yes, generally speaking, I should moderate, right? But every now and then, now and then, every now and then. Let's just throw moderation out the window and go full steam ahead. That was fine in my 20s <laughs> and, my, and a little bit of my 30s. But in my 40s, no, no, no. We're going we're gonna to just pump, pump the brakes. <laughs> this vehicle is not what it used to be. So that is one rule that has changed. Um, yeah. You know, like everything in moderation, including moderation itself. That, that was the, the rule that I did throw out the window. When I was uh, younger, I I think I mentioned this on the last stream, but no one probably heard it because we have demons in our cables. Mm. Um, I I used to, when I was younger, practice Buddhism, and one of the big pillars of Buddhism is the whole concept of moderation. Mm. And I think that that whole teaching, the idea of not living to... Uh, not living in excess and not living in poverty or in absence of fulfilling things, kind of finding the middle ground was the thing that kind of like, it was my saving grace when I was younger. Yeah. So that's something that I have, I have fought very vigilantly to carry on into my adulthood because it has uh, helped me stay grounded in a good way. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say that when I was younger, I had examples of both things. Um, very, very loud examples of both extremes. And I saw the benefit of always striving to find um, a happy and safe middle ground. So, yes, I I agree with you there, too. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the ones that uh, the next one is is one that came from. um, So I had several, actually, that came from a lot of mid 90s rap songs. And this is one of them. And it turns out that I was misinterpreting it the entire damn time that I had this. <laughs> I didn't find this out until like an hour before the show because I was like, you know, I don't I, I haven't listened to the whole song in a long time. I really hope it's not something terrible. 
uh, but it's one time's got no case. Now, what I always thought that that meant is that if someone uh, gives you like uh, if someone wrongs you once, forgive it. Right. Just be like, hey, this happened. Let's put let's put it in the past. It happened. It's not cool. Don't do it anymore. One time's got no case. We're fine. We move forward. Right. But if it happens yeah. again, now you have a case. Now, that's not actually the meaning of that. I had always thought growing <laughs> up, Sir mix a lot one time's got no case. If there's only one offense, then 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 you got no case. That's not what it means. What you know what it mean? means? OK. What? <laughs> one time is a uh, it was, you know, I guess, Seattle slang for a cop. So what he was saying Wait. is. Yeah, one time. Now, the reason it was one time is because uh, it was used as a slang for police because looking at them twice could raise suspicion. So you only look at them one time. Oh, wow. I had never heard that. Never in my life until like I've ne- a couple hours ago. Never heard that I've before. Ne- but Sir makes a lot. One time's got no case. I have misunderstood that song for 30 years plus. I want to say that most songs are that way for me. Like, do you, do you ever, because when you're young, like, you don't realize just how much, like, all songs are about, like, screwing and drugs, right? Because you're, you're, like, innocent and you don't think about things that way. So you're like, oh, this song is about, like, friendship and, and wanting to dance all night. And, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I want to feel the heat with somebody. Ah, oh, yeah. I want to dance with somebody. Right. With somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's. I want to say that uh, even now, um, because you don't meditate on that stuff, really. Like, you don't sit around pondering how you've misinterpreted songs your entire life. Like, Mm -hmm. one will play at, like, a department store, and I'll be walking around, you know, getting my socks or something, and I'll hear a lyric, and I'll be like, oh. And and it, like, takes me (laughs) back. I'll be standing, like, in the aisle, and I'll stop everything, and I'll just be like, oh, that's what that means. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's what he was saying. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So no, I, I get, I, absolutely. I get that. I get that. But no, no. Like back to what you said about uh, the whole like screw me once, shame on me. That, that's basically right. yeah. It's another way of saying that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fool, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. I'm gonna actually do no. the George Bush thing. Don't do that. Uh, fool me twice, shame mm-hmm. on you. That's it. Yes. Yes, fooled, that you one. Can't fooled again. <laughs> yes, 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 right. yes, that yeah. one. Yeah, no, I, I think that's always good advice is to pay attention to who, um, and then like in general, like who does what when you aren't present also, I guess, like pay attention to like how people are, how they behave when you aren't around, if it, you do happen to find out mm-hmm. what that is. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I came from like a, a, a background full of like mean girls, I guess you could say. And Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's for whatever reason resonating with me right now in that way. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that, that was one of the ones that I did leave out, but I'll go ahead and say it now. Uh, never, what was it? Never date someone more than once. If they don't tip, like if they're paying for the meal and they don't tip the server, get out of here. Oh, I don't believe in tipping. You don't in tipping. <laughs> How do you not believe in tipping? What's wrong with you? We can discuss that in the in the drunken rush crazed okay. athlete All right. thing, I guess. All right, you're if we're on. gonna go like full we're gonna go full on politics and history and like like the history of tipping and everything. I'll even call Mark in here. We just talked about this the other night. That's so funny. Really? Um Yes. Okay, how um, about this? How about this then? that doesn't clean up after themselves and leaves a mess, like, like leaves an inordinately sized mess for the server to clean up. How about that? I think just, you could like sum it up as how you treat uh, people who work in service is like probably a good, a good way to state that. Like I, I always say like, you can tell a lot about a person based on how they treat uh, the waiter. Yes. You exactly. could say that. Um, exactly. Like my, I, I don't want to call my parents, but like, People I know, I'll just say that. Okay. Um, I notice when I know I, you can tell who has had a waitstaff job or a uh, like a you know worked in clothing like a department store or whatnot. Um, yep. you, you can tell 
people who have had those types of jobs and who haven't like mm-hmm. because they almost consistently have like a certain way of treating those people and it always is like nails down a chalkboard when i i witness certain um like the nuance of certain like exchanges yeah um and you, you can tell a lot about a person and I, i'm not saying that that like people who like don't have that sort of experience or inherently bad or anything like that it's just i don't know i don't know what it says about them what would that what would that say about the person though so like by by stating like whether they tip or not or whether they leave a mess or whether they how they treat the waiter like that's implying that it states yeah. something about their character so yes. what what is it saying exactly it's about saying their that character? you that that person feels as though these the people in service, they feel that even they feel that some people are beneath them just because of their position in life. Like that person, like the the per, unnamed people that that have never had a service job, like they might leave a huge giant mess on the table and only leave like, you know, dimes and quarters for a tip or something like that. Like mm-hmm. just being rude and I don't care about you. You suck, you know take that poor, take my change. You know what I mean? Like it has that kind of connotation to it. It's a person that doesn't value someone that works hard to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's a lack of, it's a lack of, um, I guess, empathy or uh, you can't relate to the person because you don't have their perspective. So you just don't respect them or you forget to respect them. So it speaks of their character in that sense, for sure. And it's something I, I definitely pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. You can, I mean, in general, you could just sum that up as you can tell a lot about, uh, people just based on how they treat other people, I guess, mm-hmm. if you pay attention. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we get, we got a little disagreement in there. Pomp Rock says tipping is BS. I think, I think the fact that we need to tip is BS, but we are where we are. Um, you know, and the, the server doesn't really have a choice about that, but, but we can, we can come back to that in the post game for sure. Uh, Krobosar says, I immediately despised a coworker cause he treated our waiter like trash the first time we went to lunch. Yep. Um, sounds, Pomp Rocks, you're exactly right. I completely agree with what he's saying there. Uh, sounds like the restaurant owners who force their employees to depend on tips. Absolutely. No, if you want to, you want, if, 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 if you're getting the guillotines out, man, I'll, I got my sharpening stone ready for you. That's not a problem, but, uh, but you know, we are where we are right now. And if it's, if it's a situation where they are dependent on their tips, I get it. I get it. And, you know, I get not wanting to continue that system again, post game, post game. Sorry. Uh, I mean, Jim. I oh. do. I'm that is to say I do tip. I just don't <laughs> believe in it. So I'm, it looks like I'm on the same page with everybody. I think I just, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, but if you look into the history of tipping, it makes it even more kind of fucked up and like bad, um, which I didn't know about it. And Mark, I guess, read an article of dating where that whole ritual came from and like what its historical underpinnings are. And he like told me one night, now I hate it even more. So it's like fresh in my, okay. my hate cue. <laughs> super, super curious about this. Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll definitely cover this in the post game for sure. Okay, so my next. Oh, actually, I do have one more for this section, and then I'll I'll do the mid show thing, I guess. Line those owners. Ooh, don't don't get me started on that, man. This isn't a political podcast. Can't do it. All right. Anyway, um, once an attempt is ma- is made to make amends, if it is turned down, you've done your part. It's on them now. Forget it and move forward. That is one. Okay, so here's what it is. Let's say that I did something to wrong you. You're pissed off at me. And I come to you and I'm say, I say, Sarah, I did, a, I did a bad thing. I was wrong for this. I'm sorry. And you're like, not good enough. You still suck. Me, me, me. I've done my part. You know, you can't just sit there and say, oh, but but maybe I should do this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, hold on a second. The, the, our, uh, our, the person we were going to bring in for the for the post game uh, is wondering, you know, uh, uh, if he's needed in five minutes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. Otherwise, I wouldn't respond to text right now. But but yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, have a beer on cue. Woo. Oh, good. <laughs> 
but yeah uh so yeah basically you you can't just keep that's too easy what's too easy it's too easy to say that if i can't I think make it depends amends, on if it depends on uh i mean like if we're just talking about like apologies like i think that there actually has to be an established like you have to you have to believe that the person who's trying to make amends actually understands like oh that's <laughs> yes absolutely yeah 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 that's that's a great point so i mean i've had you have to actually solve the problem so it's not even about like apology or meeting halfway like you actually have to sort of like go to the root of the thing that was a problem in the first place and solve that for it to really like have any weight i think i think where that came from is if they aren't willing to do that if you're saying look you know i i understand the problem this is the thing and we did this and that happened and yada yada you know and i'm sorry blah 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 if they if if you do have an understanding of it and they still aren't aren't you're willing to make amends, then that's not on you. You can't carry that with you. you yeah, no, I, no, I, I've been, I've definitely been there in like positions where. Yeah, yeah, you have, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> I, I well, mean, relative to what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> not even that, but well, not even that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, not even that. Uh, but, um, bad example, but uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was. Um, no, no, I've definitely, I've gotten into spats with, I mean, particularly like when I was younger and like, nobody knows how to like be an emotionally mature human being. Cause you're like 20 and you don't know right. shit. Um, I do remember getting into spats with people and like either me completely writing them off or them writing me off. Cause you're angry and you're mm -hmm. not able to actually resolve the root of the problem. So like, it just becomes this festering bad thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I do agree with you that like that sort of stuff, you just have to kind of let go um, wh whatever end of it that you're on. Like you have to kind of just like let what is be and like go on with your life for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that goes back to just not uh, harboring bad energy in your life. You have to kind of like keep going like yeah. things aren't ever going to be perfect and not everyone is going to like you. You just have to keep doing your thing and move on with life really absolutely yeah so uh we're a uh, quick mid-show break here we're talking uh to sarah petkus about uh the different rules that uh that we govern our lives by and you know some some of them i'm i might be wrong on you never know and, oh, i'm not uh, trying to say you're wrong no 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 that's fine that's fine oh, no. that's fine that and my hatred of rush but uh <laughs> yeah but that that that's different that's different <laughs> okay that's fine uh so let's see uh oh uh, krobosar says apologies don't mean much if the person doesn't understand what they did wrong jim agrees uh but yeah i just uh, want to uh, real quickly uh, uh again if you want more information on the sin shop itself especially if you're in the las vegas valley area uh we are located at 1075 american pacific drive suite c and that's in Henderson, Nevada. And you can find out more information about that at sinshop.org. And uh, also, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but I have a snazzy little shirt right now. It says, watch for flying wrenches. It's got this little logo on it right there for the Sin Shop. And where on earth could you get such a thing? Well, if you see there in chat, my handy dandy bot just told you where, uh, birch.streamelements.com forward slash sin shop, and you yourself can order one of these. You can order a gigantic freaking mouse pad that you may have seen on the on the Monday night show. They're really cool, actually. I like them a lot. Like, I love them for, like, desktop mats. They're really cool. At any rate, um, so we got all that stuff. We got merch, all that junk. Uh, and as always, you know, if you've got a question for us, please feel free to ask us in the chat. We, of course, love to respond for, to it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, uh, do whatever you need to do, and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so my next section that I have is called When to be Rude. OK, but before I go there, I've been talking a lot about mine. You've got a whole post-it note full. Lay it on me. What do you got? You know what? Mine, I feel kind of bad now because mine aren't really like general life guidelines. They're more like actual makery, like like Let's do those. maker. 
ethos kind of things. I do have a list of, of more life like related. Uh, I just did this post. I'm actually kind of, I should put it in the chat or something or in the show notes, I guess. But there, uh, two weeks ago, I did this uh, write up about um, mindfulness, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it was entirely about exactly what you're going through, like your 10 um, sort of life uh, things that you you think about or hold in your mind to kind of help guide you through certain situations. It's like your, your commandments, if you will. Um, but, uh, kind of boiled all that down to, uh, like the concept of having a mantra, okay. uh, which a, mon a mantra is basically, uh, it's like a, a word or a phrase that you say to yourself internally to help kind of guide your mind out of crappier places into better places so that you, your mind is just more positive. It's like a more healthy place for you to make decisions and operate out of. And um, there's a bunch of stuff on that list that uh, there has to be at least 10 things, 10 like mantras that I cited that have helped me just get through this year in general. Yeah. Um, but uh, I can I can scoop some things off of that, but I don't have it up. I do have this handy dandy little post it right here that I put together yeah. that has more like hacker makery stuff. That's that's less it. it's less heavy. Um, but these seem these seem like far less interesting now that we're talking about like tipping waiters and rush and stuff. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, do you want a second to, to think and I'll, I'll bust out my when to be rude. Um, I almost want to talk about these in post game, but these are, God damn it. Yeah. You go talk about being rude and I'll okay. talk about mantras. Let me, let me dig it up. Oh, actually, so wait, before we, uh, no, you know what, I will, remind me later to uh, tell you my mantra, because I, because I realized while you were saying that, that I actually do have a mantra, because you were like, you were, you were talking about the mantra you used to go to a, to a safe space, or, you know, not safe space, but you know what I mean, like to, to like, center yourself or whatever, and I have one, and I never really thought of it as a mantra, and I'll tell you about that here in just a second. I thought of two situations, which it is actually, you're doing the right thing, by being rude, okay? Number one is do not hold the door for someone who is more than 10 feet away from you because this is, uh, because when you do that, you're making someone else hurry up in order to catch the door so that you're not waiting. You're basically imposing on them. It's kind of like a, not it's not passive aggressive, but it's like a passive like thing. So if someone's more than ten feet away, if I, especially if I don't know them, then I'm not going to hold the door because I don't want to impose on someone before I've even met them. Okay, so that's one of them. And I'll go ahead. And, the spice must flow. Yeah, Pomp Rock says I've adopted fear is the mind killer from Dune. Okay, mine's nowhere near that uh, that. Uh, Dune related. <laughs> so, so wow, you look, you look like you are, you are looking deep. You're I'm trying, trying to, to find the, ch is there a chat in, in the, the, the thing that we're doing, like where everyone is, everyone's talking in a chat somewhere. Where is that? Oh, that's on twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. Of course. It's on Twitch. Oh, okay. You're I'm looking like on, on YouTube, Discord. aren't you? No, I'm on discord. Like, Oh like, no 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 no! Sorry, I'm. No, you're fine. You're fine. I don't. I have no idea what's going on. Here you go. I'll Game. even throw the link right there on the screen for you. Twitch.tv forward slash send shop. I won't find it because I'm I'm horrible at doing things here. I'm on the Twitch thing. Okay. Click on the Twitch. You I'm got clicking this. the Twitch. Click I've that Twitch. It. Get on that internet and call it. <laughs> All right. Well, then I, I'll go ahead and bust off bust off my last one of the uh, of the when to be rude. This is this. I, this might be a controversial one. I'm not sure. Let's see. When in a parking lot by yourself at night, this is more for guys. If you're a guy, you're in a parking lot by yourself at night. A woman is also pulls up to the same place that you are. And, you know, you can tell from the way she's walking or whatever that she is going to the same place as you. In my mind, me personally, I make every effort to beat her to the door. 
I need to rephrase that. I make every effort to get in front of her on the path to the door. The reason why is because I don't want to follow anybody in a parking lot at night. <laughs> I have no desire to do that ever. So instead of being like, oh, yes, I will be the gentleman and go right ahead. No, I'm making a beeline for it. I'm going to use every single inch of my my tallness to walk as fast as humanly possible to beat that person to the door. That is, that oh. is that's how I roll. <laughs> and the reason I mean, why, like I said, you know, imagine, you know, if you're if you're someone that's, you know, five foot six or something like that, trying to walk through a dark parking lot at night and here comes a six foot tall dude walking right behind you. Mm, not so not so hot. I mean, I guess I don't I don't uh, you don't really feel is, that are way? you are you for me like I mean for you you're you you don't want somebody to assume that you are going to do something negative in right. the context that you are existing in yeah exactly I mean I want them to have to have control of the situation basically that's what I'm talking about I'm 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 handing over control of the situation to them from a strategic standpoint just to be like look i'm i'm six foot tall you're there's a really good chance you're not going to shank me but <laughs> but you don't know that about me so here you take control it's fine i don't i'm not sure like i i i haven't been in the position where i've analyzed how i would react in that situation if it was me in that position i'm kind of i'm weird in the sense that like Growing up in my life is like a, I guess a female since that's the context that we're discussing or yeah. whatever. I, I haven't, I, I, I never really grew up with that innate fear that like other women talk about where they're they feel like they're on the defensive all the time from other like men and like what their intentions might be like mm -hmm. negative intentions. Yeah. Um, I kind of just. And this might be like speaking from like a point of being either sheltered or naive or just like not being aware of like the evils of the world. But I kind of just lived my life not assuming that other people were out to like, like kidnap or rape me. So I was just I would act normal. And if people acted normal around me, then everything was fine. Like I never really walked from my car to a building as expecting that the guy that's tall walking behind me, like, like to be afraid of them. And I should mm. like walk faster or have my phone out so that I look like I'm not in a vulnerable position. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, like for me, like if it were, if it, someone did that to me, I think I would react probably not in the way that they were expecting because I wouldn't understand what social cue they're cueing off of. Interesting. Um, okay. Um, but I don't know. Like I've had, I don't know. I'm, I'm weird like that. I guess. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. No. I, and, and I kind of expected that to be a little controversial because, because even when I told my wife about that, because it, it, this was based off an actual situation. I used to uh, work on a West on a East coast schedule and we're here on the West coast. So I'd be going into the office like, you know, before six o'clock in the morning. And so, you know, I'd be walking in and there was, there was some girl that worked at a completely different company. That, that, you know, I didn't even know whatsoever. And we're both there and we're the only ones in that big old parking lot. And I was just like, you know, I, I just kind of felt this weird vibe off of her. And I was like, well, that kind of makes sense. I get it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a big, tall yeah. dude wearing big pants. I got big mutton chops at the time. You know, I get it. Fine. I'm just going to go out in front of you. And it did seem to chill things out. It was interesting. It was like, oh, oh no. I'm following him. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't attempt, I don't, uh, I don't want to perpetuate the mindfulness in myself that I ought to live in the assumption that people don't, Nor there's so you. many things going on there. Um, Nor I don't want to, I think it would make me uncomfortable if somebody did that because I know that they're, they think that I assume that they assume that they're a potential danger to me. And it would probably make me feel really uncomfortable because there's so many layers of like unspoken, like preemptive assumption going on there Dang. that does that make sense? 
My, um, well, my brain melted, but it does kind of make sense, I think. It would make me it would make me uncomfortable personally. Interesting. Because it impl- it implies that that person assumes that I assume that they might harm me, so they don't want to they don't want to make me uncomfortable. So almost, I don't know if it's for my sake or theirs. They want to get themselves out of that awkward position yeah. by doing the thing that they're doing. Yeah. But you're also implying for a moment that I assume that you are a threat to me, which is also kind of weird because it's like, I don't know. Does that make sense? It kind of does. It kind of does. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Cause, cause you can fall on either side of it though. Like you have that view, right? Cool. Totally cool. But if someone doesn't, there's only one of two ways that you can act. And, and, and it seemed to me the best way to handle it would be the safest way. In other words, the the best way to handle it would be the way that what's the worst case the worst case scenario is you're like, well that guy's kind of a dick. You know, you you wouldn't even know why I would be try try to get in front. Oh, yeah, no. You know what? Maybe that's it. Pombrox has a great point. I usually try to get in front because I walk pretty fast and some people get weird when you walk up behind them. Absolutely. Yes. As a tall guy, I can say that that is 100 percent the case because they would have to walk faster in order to walk at the same rate. So, yeah, I wonder if that's where that came from, if that's the vibe I was getting just because I'm walking up behind someone. I think you might you might have something there. But, yeah, those are my two times to be rude. So do you did you find your things? I I do, but I can't post the link to it because it. I can't sign into to Twitch because okay. it sent an authenticator to my phone, and my Ooh. phone is chucked into a camera rig somewhere, and I don't know where. Got it. Because okay. I've been. Um, I could find it. it. There's just multiple steps involved to me, even just sending the link in the chat. So, um, I but I, I have. We only got another ten but, minutes, and you know, go ahead. Um, well, I can stick to my, my base list. Do like, it. okay. So if, if hypothetically we're just like, ha- like just hackers doing hacky stuff, uh-huh. um, I think in the context of just making things in general, the most important thing that you can do before you set out and like do any sort of design work is to draw the thing that you want to make first. I agree with that. Yeah. So number one, first and foremost is to draw the thing that you wish to make. Mm-hmm. Um, have a dedicated space to create inside of. So more than just a table or something that you you use half the time for something else, like have a dedicated temple that you do your religion inside of, basically. Um, my number three is get one size of hardware, like whether that be M3 or M4 or Imperial, whatever that is, like have a set of hardware that is all different lengths, but of the same size thing. And mm. that way, when you pick up a screw, you know that it's an M- M3 squ- screw and it will be compatible with any nuts or any other shit that you like go to put it inside of. There's no like mm. sorting them out or anything. Um, and your lab won't be like a giant nest of tiny little bits and pieces because uh, I know that just for the amount of assembly that I do, like there's loose miscellaneous hardware everywhere. And I'm really glad that um, and I have to uh give credit to Crux for this because uh, when I was first, first, first getting started out um, 3D printing and assembling my own, um, uh, I guess, shit that I designed in CAD, um, he had a kit. Uh, He is actually, yeah, he uh, kind of took me to, I think, fries or something and I got one of those bins with the dividers and he encouraged me to pick one thing like M3 or M4 or M2, if you use really tiny stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he suggested metric and he goes, just flush that out, you know, like flush it out. I mean, like get all the sizes from, um, you know, five millimeter to as long as they'll go like 50 millimeter and like different types of nuts and all the different types of washers and fill it up and just always replenish it when you get low on stuff and then just try to stick with that. Unless Hmm. like you have a different, different project that is larger or smaller and you need, you know, specific stuff. But, um, that's helped my life stay a hell of a lot less chaotic, um, while designing. Um, 
My number four is get calipers, get digital yes. calipers. Yeah. Um, funny story. Like uh, when I first met everybody at the at Sin Shop, uh, one of the first people that I uh, like, other than other than Crooks and like just a handful of others, um, I was discussing matters of designing my first parts to be 3D printed with Mark, who's uh, my partner. Um, Mark uh, and I were talking like via Facebook or something, and he was helping me uh, uh, get started with SketchUp, which uh, Crux mentioned last podcast. That was my first CAD program that I ever created actual physical shapes in that I would then print out and then try to assemble and stick together. And I designed my first Delta robot parts and I completely eyeballed all of them mm. is to say that I didn't type in the length or the exact measurements of any of the faces or any of the lines or any of the anything. I just eyeballed everything. Right. Which is what you do if you are, you know, an artist that, you know, sketches everything in before they do a painting. Nothing's exact. It doesn't have to be. It just yeah. has to be correct relative to itself. Did it work the first time? So, no, it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it was awful. I thought you were going to say, and it worked perfectly the first time. And I was like, oh, well. Oh, no, no. It was no. it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> no, they... Uh, On a they, scale of one printed. to the start of this show, how bad was it? It was it was about as bad as like the, the train wreck that was the audio at the beginning of the show. That's fair. It was, um, <laughs> it was really bad. I um, They printed, so um, I didn't... They weren't like... Um, they were solid shapes, so that was a plus. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. screw that up. But um, nothing lined up with anything else because nothing was measured precisely. And I think uh, Mark, very shortly thereafter, or, or uh, I think Nate maybe even from the shop, was like, you should really invest in a pair of digital calipers and just get used to measuring everything. And when you make anything in CAD, you have to type in exact measurements and do math like you just have to so mm -hmm. get in the habit of it and after that it just i had to rewire my brain but then i was on the path to actually making actual engineered parts not just like slapping stuff together shit. yeah yes um my my is this number five one two three four yes five is uh document your build along the way don't mm. do it at the end i'm really bad you at won't. that it's, I think a lot of us like, uh, will forget. I know that I, I can get really bad about that because I get excited. I just want to assemble it and see if uh, the thing I'm making is going to work or I just yep. really wish to see it finished. And I won't take the time to snap a couple of photos here and there or, uh, you know, shoot a short video clip where I'm explaining like what I'm about to do. And I, always hate myself when I don't have that footage and I really want to make a video after the fact, but I don't want to take it apart and do it a second time. Mm. Um, so remind yourself like, like every morning, like if you're working on a project for multiple days, like when I get up in the morning, I decide what clip I want to get. If it's a 30 second clip, I'm like, well, what am I doing? Is it assembly? Get 30 seconds of me putting the thing together, talking about it. Yeah. And then I'm, Loving myself later. Hmm. Uh, six, I guess, is a. Uh... Oh, and I get this. I give this this credit to my uh, mentor from uh, college. I, when I was a student at SAIC in Chicago, uh, my mentor uh, gave me this wonderful stigma that I am very happy I have. Um, Dan Miller. He told us that we are not allowed to design anything that we can't take apart and put back together multiple times. Oh. And the caveat in this was that we were not allowed to use adhesives for anything sure. that be, could be put together um, mechanically. And this, he was a, uh, he taught fabrication for motion and robotics. Mm -hmm. So uh, it made sense that if you're putting together uh, mechanical assemblies, you wouldn't use adhesives. But um, a lot of us still at that as young fledglings, uh, <laughs> really wanted to as a shortcut and break out the hot he, snot and uh just yes. just stick that old microcontroller anywhere yes yes yeah. just and he was very adamant that we could take everything apart and put it back together again and i it made sense i mean mm -hmm. makes sense hearing it 
I'm very glad that he told us that because uh, I've stayed very, very uh, faithful to that advice. And um, the stuff that I make might not be easy to put together and take back apart, but I always can. And I always do. I always have to take everything I've made apart to yeah. do something and put it back together again. So hmm. no, you have to have a way back. And oh, yeah. All right. So number seven, uh, walk away when you're stuck. Yeah. Um, OK. That's one that I need too. to learn. <laughs> yes, me too. Me too. Yeah. I um, if you are banging your head over something for days on end, uh, you need to have the power and temperance to put it down and walk away from it. Because uh, I think that our brains, the way that they work, they still crunch the problem, even though you're focusing on something else. So mm -hmm. if you go read a book or play a video game or sleep, um, kind of in the background, your brain is still working out the problem that you couldn't solve um, consciously. Yeah. And when you come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes, it tends to just sort of align itself a lot easier, um, sometimes instantly, or you're mm -hmm. capable of seeing it in a way you couldn't before and you solve the problem in an instant. And if you had just kept you know, pushing your face into it for another hour or two, you still wouldn't have made any progress. Yeah. So walk walk away and then kind of on the same I guess vibe is that uh work on multiple things at once like don't just focus on one problem like really? I try to have like two or three things started um that I'm working on and they're at various stages of completion and I'll kind of once I feel like I hit a wall on one thing I'll put it down and I'll go pick up something else for the rest of a day uh, see because I to, I'm a, I cannot I can't multitask, number one, but like usually I pick a task and I am on it, eins why, eins why, eins why, until it's done. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I see what you're saying. If you have multiple ones and you're used to not banging your head against it, then yeah. Kind of weird. It helps. Oh, uh, so uh, Pomprox says he often solves problems when driving from some for some reason. Kind of weird. It seems easy to visualize when you should be watching the road. It makes sense though because you're you're not thinking about it actively. You know what I mean? You're you're um, you're letting your mind work on it in its spare cycles in the background. Maybe I wonder if mm. that's why. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Hmm. Does that happen to you? No, like I, you, you start solving problems while you're driving? Like, um, no, but I, like I, well, similar, like I mentioned, like if yeah. I, if I'm sleeping or laying in bed or showering, like the yeah. subconscious state, I think does, or like the, I guess the back burner state does keep crunching the problem until it works it out. Mm -hmm. And when I come back to it, it's just already solved. It's kind of like when you you're training your classifier and you give it your data set and then you press like do and then you have to walk away. And when you come back, you have like a brain trained and it can like actually think and do stuff. But you have to actually walk away from it and let it like do the let equation it on its own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a pizza, damn it. This is pizza. <laughs> yeah. No, Pork. yeah, pizza. Pizza. Aw. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So I think we have reached, uh, we, we've, we're at an hour. I did not get to my, my secrets of success. I don't know if I'm going to do that in the post game because I might have to be con convinced that I like Rush. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to grab a beer and we might bring in Thomas. He can take you. I, I'm pretty sure Thomas is going to tell me that I'm wrong too on my, on my, I just do not care for Rush. I mean, Detroit's <laughs> pretty close to Canada and Canada. I think all Canadians like Rush by default. Otherwise like you, I think they kill you or something. I think you might huh? be right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really serious about learning French and liking Rush, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and hockey. Hockey. Oh, yeah. Hockey is very important, especially if you're from Detroit. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Uh, let's see. Pop Rocks, before we go here, says uh, he says, too often I'll start thinking about something and can't remember driving for the past five minutes or whatever. Not going to lie, me too. <laughs> I do the same yeah. thing. There, What is that? There's some, some kind of automatic place your brain goes to 
that you can just you can just be driving a car for a half hour and you're fine. You're paying attention. Krobosar says it's okay to not like things. No, I got you, but Rush is one of those things. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jim's from Canada. I forgot about that. So, so he's going to give me the business over my uh, my hatred of Rush. But um, so uh, I can't remember what I, was, what I was saying. Oh, the the place where your brain goes when you're driving for forever and a half and you're you're just not paying attention. But you're driving and you're fine if something would have, were to have happened. Uh oh, Sorry. now. No, hold on. No, you're fine. Oh, it didn't even mess up it's... the uh, the video. You're you're good. Keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, Just mute your audio. You're good. All right. Um, but okay. So yeah, I, I did say we were gonna take a break and, and switch everything out. So we should do that. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna switch right. everything out. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the end of the show. So see you later. If you're on Bye. Twitch, stay right there. And uh, we're gonna come back, and uh, and we're gonna we're, people are gonna tell me I'm wrong. Some might tell me I'm right. I might give you the uh, how many are there? Five. My five tips for success that I governed my entire DJ career under. It might be interesting. It might not. We might do it. We might not. I don't know. But stick around uh, for about five ten minutes, and we will be right back, and you will see something. Yeah. Hi, I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour, make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sin shop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us, build something, and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. It's a lot of fun. Kind of. But hey, anyway, we hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and we will see you there. One take. Not one.